I'm Mother Betty at St. Matthew's Episcopal Church here in Fairbanks, and we are here to do this version of Bishop Bits. And you probably think that makes perfect sense since sitting beside me is the Bishop of Alaska. He's the eighth Bishop, right? Eighth is Eighth right. Bishop of Alaska, um, Bishop Mark Latim, and he has been joining us over these past few months just to kind of talk about different um, subjects, all about having to do with church. And so today, first of all, I'm so glad you're here. I, I do want to acknowledge also that Jessica Ives is um, the one who's running sound and everything, so we're grateful for her presence as well. I thought, Bishop, since we have just concluded the, it, was it 45th convention? 46th. 46th convention of the Episcopal Diocese of Alaska, that maybe you would want to talk about that a little bit. But I think that one of the things that was really important to you was that a resolution was passed. It was the only resolution, I think, that was filed and it, and it passed. And it had to do with indigenous um, folks who had gone out to boarding schools. Can you talk about that for just a bit? Why it was important to you and what it was? Sure. Well, the resolution that we passed at uh, this convention uh, basically is a pledge uh, of this diocese, of, of the bishop, and uh, of our convention deputies and all of us to, um, to be involved and to participate in the Episcopal Church's wider intention to engage in some truth and reconciliation work regarding uh, the experience of our Alaska Native, uh, Native American and indigenous uh, sisters and brothers in the boarding school experiences. Um, this is something that obviously this past year we all sort of stood in, in shock and um, I think in, in, in painful struggle with our uh, sisters and brothers in the indigenous community as uh, we learned of the unmarked mass graves on the grounds of some church boarding schools uh, in, in Canada. Um, but I think we know that the experience of boarding schools um, has been a significant source of trauma for uh, our Native American, Indigenous, Alaska Native uh, sisters and brothers. And that would be through generations, it, right? Right. This is a sort of intergenerational trauma, what some would refer to as um, historical trauma that uh, that I think deeply has, is a deep wound uh, that uh, our sisters and brothers in the Alaska Native Indigenous community have had to carry and, sh and, and, and uh, hold for, uh, well, generations. And um, as an Episcopal church, we know that the Episcopal church was involved in boarding schools for Native American uh, children. Uh, we were involved in mission projects that were directed uh, at serving our Native American people. And here in Alaska, of course, our history is um, very positive with those experiences, but uh, we know that the history uh, is written by one side of the equation often. And of course, Alaska uh, boarding schools here, uh, particularly the residential ones, were operated by by the, the state and the, and the territory. Um, but we are invested as a church in, in hearing the stories and being, a, and, and being willing to have the faith to stand in the light of truth, to hear from our indigenous brothers and sisters their experience, their story, um, and be ready to see our role as a church in, in, in those stories. Uh, so that reconciliation can be done. And so what does that mean exactly in terms of how the church now would be part of a reconciliation process? Well, I don't know, you know what, I don't know exactly what that looks like, Betty. I think that's part of this process. We need to hear 
from our sisters and brothers in the indigenous community their story. And we need to, we need to stand in that truth. And we need to be willing also um, to then hear what is needed for reconciliation to be done. So often we think that, well, you know, if we just, we, we just need to apologize, which is important, but uh, an apology sometimes can be done without actually listening mm -hmm. to what the other is actually mm -hmm. asking and saying. Um, so I, th I think that what it looks like right now is for us to, um, it, to begin to plan ways that we can listen. Uh, and, and provide opportunities, safe opportunities, for people to be able to tell and share their experience. Um, so that is something that um, sort of I wonder if people will wonder about. If we ask that these kinds of stories begin to be told in a wider way, then how are we going to protect the tellers? Well, that's a really good, that, that's In terms really, of their heart. right, that's a really important element to it. So we're, again, going to need to take some direction from, uh, from our indigenous community, mm -hmm. uh, our, our elders and our leaders. Um, we, uh, there's already been um, the, the Office of, of Indigenous Ministries, uh, the Episcopal Church's Office of Indigenous Ministries, Brad Hoff is the, uh, uh, the missioner, uh, serving on the presiding bishop's staff. Uh, this past week, Monday, Indigenous Peoples Day, uh, they had a webinar called Native Voices, and it perhaps is a model um, of one way that this sort of truth-telling can be facilitated. Um, and it was a panel of Indigenous voices from around the Episcopal Church. Very proud of our own Pearl Shinar, who was one of the participants. Mm -hmm. Uh, Pearl uh, lives in Anchorage, but she's from Minto. And, um, and of course, that process, those were, those were folks who were sort of hand-selected by Brad and, and prepared and were able uh, to know how, they had some experience in doing some of that truth-telling. Um, and I know that Brad had some uh, support mechanisms uh, on hand for anybody who, uh, who the discussion, the conversation, might have stirred up some, some powerful emotions. Um, and in fact, when you talked about it, when it happened over the time of convention, there, were, there was a hearing time, and you took um, measures with Michael Burke, who was the rector at St. Mary's, to also make that kind of protection available. That, that's right. Th or thank support. You for, thank you for pointing that out. Michael Burke was the, uh, was the chair of the resolutions committee at our convention. And um, Michael, Michael really did an excellent job on the hearing. We, the hearing was really intended to, to be an opportunity for folks to speak to the resolution mm -hmm. and not to really talk about their own uh, experience of trauma, but recognizing that whenever we get into this area, we are, we are entering into a very tender um, spot in people's lives. And so, um, Michael arranged to have uh, folks from Tanana Chiefs Counseling Services uh, on hand. Um, also, um, he had some, uh, some of our, our clergy who have uh, some particular skills in, um, in listening. Plus, we made all of the resources that are available um, for things like suicide prevention and uh, the helpline and all of that uh, were available and on screen so that so that we did have resources available for, for folks. Because this is, as I said, this is a very uh, tender topic to talk about. So I think we will also, our presiding bishop and the president of the House of Deputies have also made uh, this work of truth and reconciliation around boarding schools, and particularly the Episcopal Church's participation in those. They have made this a, a primary focus of our general convention coming up next year in Baltimore. And so how will what we've done in this diocese um, dovetail with what they've, they're doing at general convention? Well, that's in part the heart, one of the pieces of the resolution is a pledge that we will make sure, however that works, that Alaska Native voices are part of that conversation. Oh, good. Good. Um, you, you know, it is... 
uh, is never intentional, um, but uh, we are Alaska, and you know we are. We, we refer to our brothers and sisters as the lower 48. Uh -huh. You know, it's sometimes it's sometimes um, sometimes there are voices that are heard more loudly, and, and and those up here in Alaska don't necessarily get to be at the table. Now we've already seen the work that's being done to assure that all uh, the most voices are are heard. I mean, again, I mentioned the, the fact that Pearl was part mm -hmm. of that webinar. Is, uh, is important. Um, but our pledge through our deputies to convention, um, through our standing committee, uh, will be to stay engaged at whatever process is happening at the, at the Episcopal Church uh, so that we will be able to have our <coughs> Alaska Native voices uh, part of the Part of the conversation. Good, and and so this was a resolution you introduced, um, yeah. and it was passed. We did. We hadn't said that earlier, but it was passed almost unanimously. It was passed unanimously. Right? Yeah. There was, yeah. I mean, it was it was passed unanimously. There was very very good testimony towards it on the Monday night mm -hmm. um, when the resolutions committee had their hearing, uh, and um, yeah, it it it, it was it, it had very strong support because I think that. Folks recognize that this is important work. This is this is who we are as the body of Christ, mm -hmm. right? Our ministry is reconciliation, mm -hmm. and how we go about doing that is kind of perhaps the the, the new step for us, right? Uh, it's not about shame and blame. It's about being able to hear and speak truth and recognize that the reality is we are all connected. And, um, and, and, uh, and I think that listening is the important first step. There may be people who are watching this. Um, you know, the general convention isn't until July of 22? or That's right, yeah, July, July of 22. So almost a year. There may be people who are watching this who wonder how they'll be able to stay um, up to date on what's going on with this and when people might be ready to listen to stories. How will we be able to get that word out? I think as we, see this is the thing, folks were saying, well, there's not a lot of action stuff in this. And part of that is because we need to be very mindful mm -hmm. of the steps. We can't drive this. This mm -hmm. is a pledge to be part of an ongoing developing conversation and process. Um, and so as we kind of begin to get a sense of, of the opportunities. Um, I think we will, uh, we will use all of the systems that we've come to see as ways to, um, uh, to communicate. Um, I think we'll, we certainly will uh, use these new uh, uses of technology that we have. Um, uh, and we will also be sure to include these in our newsletters mm -hmm. and um, uh, so uh, plus we know that part of the resolution was there would be a report to next year's diocesan convention from the deputies of general convention uh, so that they can speak to where we are and where the church is you know this is not this is not a project that has a beginning you know and mm -hmm. then we can say and we will be done with this task. Mm -hmm. This is really a, a pledge to an ongoing way of being in relationship with one another. And, um, and I think that um, uh, probably we will be, uh, probably we will be uh, well on our way uh, by this time next year, but we will not be able to check off a box and right. saying, Oh, we've done that, aren't we? Wonderful. Right, right. Um, you know, the, the Episcopal Church in, see, I've even forgotten now, but it's been many. I think it was 2009, the convention, gen, the general convention of 2009, or maybe it was even 2006, we, um, we renounced the doctrine of discovery. Mm -hmm. You know, that, 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 the, the doctrine that, uh, that basically gave Christian license to the whole idea of um, coming into a land and displacing its indigenous people and taking land and all of that. 
we renounce that doctrine, and yet we still are trying to figure out what all that means. Um, and uh, I think that a truth and reconciliation process, uh, if, if, if you look at the one that, the model probably of all, the one that was in South Africa, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it was not a, it was not a one year um, program. It was really uh, a, a, a process that was well directed with an intended end, which was all about right relationship. Mm -hmm. So if people watching this, if this brings up questions for them or things that they feel like they need to pass on, would they call your office? Sure. I, yeah, that would, be, that would be fine. Okay. And the um, phone for the diocesan office is 907-452-3040. Wow. Maybe. That's is it? right. Yay. Absolutely. <laughs> um, so thank you. Is there anything else that you wanted to say before we close this? Um, I just, I'm, I'm very grateful for the, uh, the support, the willingness, the energy uh, that um, I have seen from across this diocese to do this work. And uh, it's, it's, it's a work that is so important and we're all sort of, uh, we're all sort of uh, committed to it, even if we don't exactly know yet Right. what that is. Yeah. yeah, I do think that it's a real, I think your idea about it being a process and a journey really is right. And it's about relationships and it's about heart work and it does take a while to do that right. And yeah. it sounds like that's what you're trying to do. Yeah, I mean, we, we recognize and it's one, and, and it's true. I, I, I was at a gathering earlier this year with, with folks in one of the villages and we talked a little bit about this and I am so deeply sorry and regret that the church that I love and the church that I'm part of, and, and when I say that, I don't mean just the Episcopal Church. I mean, we can't, we are all Christians. Mm -hmm. We all claim the faith of Christ. And even if it's another denomination that is, mm -hmm. uh, that is engaged in, um, in, in some kind of a, a, a process that causes wounding of my neighbor, as a Christian, I, I, I bear even that. Mm -hmm. Uh, even that wound. So I am deeply sorry for the wounds that have been, uh, that have been done by, by the church. Um, and I think that the church is definitely uh, at a place where we need to be willing to have the faith to stand in the light of truth and to hear those stories and to recognize our common humanity. Thank you. And thank you for joining us again for this edition of Bishop Bits. Um, we do them every couple of weeks. If, you, if there's anything that you particularly would like to hear the bishop's thoughts about, just send them to us here at St. Matthew's and we'll add them to our queue. Um, again, I'd like to thank Jessica Ives for being our technology person and thank the bishop for joining us. Thank you, Betty. You're welcome. God bless you. Bye-bye.